In this video, we are going to go over the top treatments for a tear in the labrum of the hip, from physical therapy to the pros and cons of steroid injections, regenerative medicine, surgery, and much more. Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper from Princeton Spine and Joint Center. The labrum of the hip is the lining of the hip joint. Specifically, it's the lining of the socket of the ball and socket joint. Now, people of all ages can have fraying or tearing of the labrum, and this tearing doesn't necessarily cause symptoms. So just because you have a tear doesn't mean you'll necessarily have symptoms. If you take a 50-year-old former dancer and you get an MRI of his or her hip just for the fun of it or for the research of it, there's a decent chance that you're going to see some wear and tear of the labrum, even if that former dancer doesn't report any hip pain. And with that said, labral tears sometimes do cause bad pain in the hip. And this is often felt primarily in the groin and also in the buttocks. Now sometimes, depending on the extent and location of the tear, along with pain, there will be a popping, catching, and or locking of the hip. Initial treatment is often rest and modified activities to allow the hip to heal. You can take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. This might play some small role in helping to calm the inflammation in the hip, but these medications are really better used to control the pain in the short term. If you had a labral tear in the hip and you took Advil for a week and you also rested the hip, and after that week the pain was gone, you would probably presume that the Advil took away the inflammation and the pain, and on the surface that would make sense to conclude. But in fact, it's much more likely that the Advil controlled the pain and a week of relative rest allowed the inflammation to self-resolve. This is because it turns out that very little of what you take by mouth will actually reach the hip joint itself. So oral medications can be used for pain control, but they have a very limited role in trying to solve the actual problem. Targeted exercise and physical therapy can be very helpful for hip labral tears. Exercises will focus on increasing your hip range of motion as well as building strength and stability. If the labral tear came because of a repetitive activities such as dancing or gymnastics or running, for example, it's helpful to evaluate your form with a therapist to see if your form can be optimized to take the pressure off of the hip when you're doing that. Now, when these conservative measures aren't sufficient, there are more invasive options that one can consider. Injections performed under x-ray or ultrasound guidance can be helpful. The most common injection is a steroid injection. Steroids are powerful anti-inflammatory medications and they'll often help relieve inflammation in the short term. Steroids, however, can weaken the cartilage in the hip joint and so they really should be used sparingly with hips if used at all. When steroid injections or any other injections are used, they should be paired with targeted exercise so that the inflammation is addressed, but so are the biomechanics so that the inflammation doesn't return as the steroids or the, other or the other medications wear off. An injection approach that I tend to personally prefer for hip labral tears is something called viscosupplementation. Viscosupplementation injections are injections of hyaluronic acid or joint fluid that are done directly into the joint. If you think of a labral tear as a pothole in the road, then you can think of viscosupplementation as a way to pave that pothole with essentially synthetic joint fluid. Now another injection approach that's gained favor recently is, usual, is utilizing regenerative medicine. Specifically in the hip, platelet-rich plasma, which is also known as PRP, or also mesenchymal stem cells from your body's own bone marrow can be injected into the joint to help the body to heal itself. And finally, if the labral tear is not improving with good conservative care, then arthroscopic surgery, which is a minimally invasive procedure in which a surgeon places a special uh, device with a small camera into your hip joint in order to clean out and repair the damaged labrum can be considered. The surgery generally lasts about one to two hours depending on the extent of the tear, and it often takes several months for a full recovery to be made. Now, some surgeons feel that being more aggressive with a hip labrum tear in terms of doing surgery sooner than later is warranted in order to repair the anatomy because these surgeons feel that this makes future damage in the hip that would then lead to hip arthritis less likely. Critics of this approach will point to the fact that many people have hip labrum tears and never develop any hip symptoms, and you certainly wouldn't go doing surgery on all of them. 
So if you can relieve the inflammation and the symptoms in someone with a symptomatic hip labral tear and return that person to life with no pain or, and, and no limitations without surgery, then why would you then do surgery on them? In the end, whether or not surgery for a hip labral tear leads to less future hip arthritis is one that will require more research in the future to help settle. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. As always, if you have any questions or comments uh, about this topic or suggestions for a future video, then of course I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. I wish you all the best of health. Thank you.